Hello everybody, Jerome right here again, and you're with me on my Jeronification channel. Um, in this um, video, I'm going to be doing some um, of my decodings of this Renaissance artwork um, and dealing with um, Mary Magdalene and um, her relationship with Jesus and my ongoing discoveries, which all reference in detail how there were Renaissance artists that knew of and actually and were commissioned to create these works of art because they referenced the genetic bridging, becoming, and continued manipulation and altering of mankind's genetics. And this was the sole purpose for the journey of that of Jesus. And every historical and biblical reference moment referencing Jesus, his disciples, or anybody else, they're um, therefore referenced in the Bible there. Okay? And there are artists. I don't care who the artist is. I can break it down to you. I can show you. There's different encryption styles. I know them all because I'm through my paranormal extinct, um, instinctive knowledge, I would like to say, and experience and encounter. I know what this is. I know what this represents because I have become a part of everything that you are seeing represented here. Okay, and I just want to go on and um, I'm going to break this image down for you. I would not be able to do this, people, if I were not being truthful with you or letting you realize what actually is happening around us here. I can do this with any famous artist painting. Because they all are sim um, symbolizing the same exact thing. Notice the male figure here with the cross. As I have told you in my many other videos, the cross represents the cross reference cross referencings of mankind's genetics. That's what it means. All of these individuals here, I'm telling you, the cross means they were genetically cro cross referenced. That's what the cross means. The cross reference is what the cross is. You can't see it here, but the top of the cross is through the clouds, meaning that the cross was cross-referenced with those from 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 which we from which we evolved, the genetics from which we evolved, meaning beyond our world. And I have already mentioned where I know where those genetics come from, where they originated. Okay, um, and I have shown you. If you want to see um, um, that, check out some of my other videos. The cross is down to the ground, showing you that it's, it's cross-referenced with that of ancient genetics, ancient rooted genetics. The level at which the cross is being crossed is showing you his hand is actually being held across there. It's showing you that they are cross-referenced between what is present, which was already present, ancient rooted genetics, and genetics that from which we originally evolved. There's um, several different paths, and I can explain that, but I'm not going to go into detail right now for you folks. All right? Mary Magdalene, first of all, when she appears with Jesus, she appears at his feet or she appears kneeled down in his pubic area. If you were deceived in, the, in the taking and accepting this guy for some divine being, then let's take him out of there and put any other being in there, natural being in there. And you will say that this man is half naked, half nude. With his clothes falling off or his arm, um, his wardrobe falling off, this woman is giving him a professional. Professional meaning a blowjob going down on him. Look at her. Breast falling out. She's barely holding them in. I believe this is by, um, oh gosh, who's the artist on this? Let me see if, see if I can think of this without, I can't bring it up. Oh, 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 oh. I'll have to look at the back. Uh, his name is on the tip of my tongue. Where is it at? Ah, oh. ah! Oh, I can't even think of his damn name. Um. Oh, Paul Rubens. I'm sorry. Paul Rubens. And Paul Rubens' artwork. If you see, I have decoded many of his artworks already. Okay. So if you want to know Paul Rubens' encryption styles, take and look at um some of my other videos that reference in some of the um, um, encryption styles of Paul Rubens which I have decoded okay and show genetic bridging all right Mary Magdalene just this, this wardrobe attire right here on, on on Jesus represents blood this on Mary Magdalene represents semen 
This here represents um, reptilian, and this here represents our ancient rooted genetics, i.e., ape, black man, okay, Africa, where we all evolved from, okay. Now, it's showing us that Jesus is bridged over Mary Magdalene. That's why she's kneeling down before him. She's taken in his genetics, he took in her genetics. His genetics to her, which was his semen. Her genetics to him, which were her blood. Shows Jesus bridging back over her and going here. Has his hand out to this guy right here. Jesus is receiving the genetics from all three of these characters back into himself. How was he did that? Again, genetically. He took in their semen. Um... You're probably saying, well, Jerome, that there is a little bit far fetched. Well, look at this bizarre picture. Isn't that a little far fetched? It's actually making the simply um the, the sexual implications that I'm already implying. I'm just actually giving it to you because I'm not afraid because I know what this all represents through my paranormal experience and encounter. Now, for those of you that are open-mouthed and fabriclasted by me being able to say such a thing whenever you whatever is actually being applied here normally in the landscape in the background it's actually indicated as well the flow of these genetics show from where I said they came from space it shows how they came from space came into rock form and then actually flowed down into the likeness of humans and then rebridged re again and then it shows these flow of genetics coming down coming down look flowing melting you see everything melting down through and then finally it's down through here and Mary Magdalene's hand is shown fused with the blood and the semen and all of these genetics these reptilian stuff all right here taken into her shown that it's taken into her hair and that's why her hair is out there you can also see a lot of actually images of Mary Magdalene where she's just covered in all just hair repre repre representing a genetic transformation and then in the landscape is everything else that she was genetically fused with now here and this in this image, I know that ancient genetics that we were fused with were that of ape, which it just became known to many people not not but so long ago. Um, this image by Paul Rubens, I don't know what, what, when it was dated, however, but I'm sure that it's in a time that de this information should not be known because a lot of this information is still not known. Like, mankind does not know that ape was genetically bridged with triceratops. But yet, I know that, and I can show you, which I'm going to show you on multiple paintings here. And it's actually referenced in, not only in just the Perubial burial stones with dinosaurs, but at Angkor Wat, where there is a Triceratops creature that shows you the same exact thing here that is encrypted in this painting that this Renaissance artist should have no business of knowing. When you Google this image, Paul Rubin's paintings, okay, I'll just put Magdalene. Paul Rubens, Paul Rubens on uh, uh, Magdalene. Look back here in the stone, people. The transparent images that I can see, multi-dimensional images. What do you see here? There is a witch-like woman right here, whom I delve as the mother of creation. She's like the Madonna. She's in a reptilian state, and she's looking upon on the face of an ape. Her likeness is 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 her chin is it shaped in the form of a snaking object of that of the penis. Even has it going at to the ape's mouth, signifying an exchange of genetics. I'm gonna bring this in closer. On the back of the ape, fused with the ape, there is my image of the a triceratops. Point and all, there's a triceratops eye. There's a triceratops, um, triceratops nostril, um, 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 snout area, nostrils, mouth line, chin line, and then it shows you that these genetics between this bridging right here shown fusing down in the image of a penis going down to it between here showing a genetic bridging here implying that there is genetic bridging that actually took place here that stems from these genetics up here now I'm gonna bring this in closer and I'm gonna show it to you and then I'm gonna make another connection with this so Jesus his disciples Mary Magdalene they were genetic bridgers 
they genetically bridge themselves not with just themselves but with also with animals ancient rooted genetics ran these genetics back over top of each other and then went out to contaminate other areas the results of these genetics will actually still be felt till today it is still happening and ancient rooted um, religion and other um, entities on large scales know exactly what this is kings and queens royalty this is knowledge that is privileged to a select few now I'm gonna bring this in and should I have to back this up or can I let me back that up there and I'm gonna bring this into I might have to back this up hold on I have to back the computer screen so I can because I'm already actually getting me all up in this video. Alright, I'm going to bring it into about there. Oh, you know what? I can bring this in after I, um, let me move this back down, and then I'll bring this in so you can see this better. Alright, now, when you Google this image, look here. There's the mouth of the triceratops, that bone-like structure that that is consistent within the snout area of the triceratops, the bottom, bottom chin area. You see the eye of the triceratops. There's the horn on the triceratops head. Then it's fused with that of the ape. You see the ape's mouth, ape's snout, ape's eye, and even the wrinkles on the ape's head. And then there's the witch-like woman, the mother of creation, her eye facing in a kissing way towards the ape with her chin in the shape of that of a penis because she is snaking in a form of genetics showing you the genetics I can read this entire picture these genetics there's a mutation that is here that is caused by the interaction of all of these genetics and then it's shown again in the form of a penis which I actually gave you a penis right here showing you how these genetics were fused with these participants down here. These trail of genetics. And this is what these people are playing with and implying down here. Now I'm gonna show you now and I told you that this tra this this triceratops which is an anchor walk and that snaky like coral coral um coral scenario that is depicted in that glyph is showing you the same exact creatures, the same exact thing. You just don't see them because you don't know what they are. But I can read what is that anchor want, just like this. Now, I'm going to bring you up something else, because I know that I, I must have your attention. That picture that I gave you, the same exact thing. You can Google this image. This is Paul Rubin's painting of Magdalene, okay, and Christ. Okay, now there's a whole lot more there, but I'm going to let this go because I'm going to bring you to, remember I gave you the penis up here, the ape, and all of that. Now that I showed this to you, all you have to do is go there because there is a separation between the face of the ape, which is attaching at the back head of the triceratops, and then the likeness of the triceratops. There's, they're split faces. Okay, almost like conjunctural twins. Alright, now if you want to see this, and then there's the penis, the mother of creation, which I, I know what all of this is symbol, um, symbolizing as well too, people. Can't nobody start or finish all of this because I believe I would like to believe that I am the only one that can actually explain all of this from start to finish. From space to the oceans of our planet, onto the surfaces of our planet, and into what we are today. Alright, now... Here's a piece of artwork by Francis Gupta, which, which appeared in the London Affiliated Times. Oh, I'm going to stab my picture here. And, okay, I got a couple more. This is of a Neanderthal type 8. Unusual, very unusual, just as unusual as this is. But yet they say the same similar story, but this is in raw form. 
how we were bridged over reptilians, what were the mutations, and everything. This ape, I think it appeared in the 1901 or 1918 um, affiliated, um, London affiliated news, okay, and all you have to do is put in Francis Gupta, um, Kupta, K-U-P-T-A, Francis Kupta, and um, um, or either Neanderthals and all of that need to come up. In this ape's body, you'll see a bunch of other faces. There's mutations. Even up in the head. Look at this right here. I'm at the mouth, the eye. There's another head of an ape right there. You see it right there? I'm circling on it right now. You know why all of this is here, people? Because it shows you how this guy mutated from his original state which is shown in here how it was done and how he was genetically bridged with other creatures to create other likenesses now check this out he's not casting his own shadow my highlights show you that he's casting the shadow of that of a reptilian a, a reptilian creature you know what he was cross bridged with he's telling you genetically long and behold there's an image of a triceratops right there identical Look, with the point on his nose, and there's another creature there too. That's the mutation that I was telling you about, which is shown in here, I believe, right in, oh, I'm sorry, right in there. The same exact mutations that are here. This Triceratops appears the same exact way, and just like that as it does at Angkor Wat. There had, this, this Triceratops has a black penis in its mouth, one end in its mouth, and the other bent over on that of a pony or a um, a ancient horse let me let this one picture go which is encrypted oh, we gotta go the other one in the apes leg oh here it is here right there there's his eye I'm over top of his forehead coming down this now this is the apes leg now coming down over his top lip where his nose will be there the other end of that bent over penis right here, looping over, showing you genetic bridging, is in the other end of this guy's mouth. And it shows you mutations of what was actually being created genetically. Here's the other end of the penis. There. It, indicating that our ancestors knew how to genetically bridge and alter themselves, people. It's an ancient cult-like ritual that has been in practice since the beginning of time. Since beyond the very first likenesses of man. It's all recorded here. Image after image after image, step in step, in sequential order, shows you how these bridges took place. And there's another Triceratops. Now, this is about Mary Magdalene. I did a video on this if you want to actually see the video. What prompted me to go to Mary Magdalene is my video yesterday on her where I actually pulled up this image where, again, she's down at the feet of Christ. She's always down at the feet of Christ, isn't she? That's, I mean, like, this guy must have either had the best sex in the world or... I mean, my gosh, I mean, these artists really went above and beyond. Again, there's an insinuation of sexual acts, people, being performed. Again, and it's all here. Jesus barely dressed before a woman. Now, again, I'm telling you that there was a genetic bridging and an exchange. And how is it shown? In these darkened areas, here, these blackened areas where this staff, and in, in, in yesterday's case I was calling it um, the shepherd's croak, it shows you wherever this thing is planted at, the ancient rooted genetics can be shown in the darknesses. You know why it's in the darknesses in the blackened area? Because it represents our black, our African, our first genetic becoming of that into mankind in these blackened areas and their mutated faces if you look and know what they are can be seen in this and I'm going to show you a few of them you see this snake right here this is a serpent when you google this image this is um 
This is Noli, N-O-L-I, and it's by Titanian, our famous Renaissance artist Titanian. Um, T-I-T-I-A-N, okay? And he's another one, people, that is famous for his encrypted artwork, which references how mankind was genetically created, bridged, and the continued process of manipulation um, that actually is maintained through today and kept in place by the Vatican, um, kings and queens of our world, and these ancient rooted cult-like entities which practice these beliefs under the guise of religion. And this is what is happening. The head of the serpent, teeth, lips, snout, eyes, bottom lip. It's transparent. When you Google this image, you'll barely see it. But now that I, I mean, I actually tainted this, this copy so you could actually see it in its heightened sense right there. But when you Google this image, now that I showed you the serpent, you'll see it. What is the serpent implying? This serpent is implying a genetic bridge between the genetics of our white counterparts and the genetics of our black counterparts. That's why it's towards this black mass here. You cannot see it. Mary Magdalene's face. She has a couple faces. There is another one here. If you were to turn this image up, it creates another hood right here. There's an eye, there's a face, and there's a witch-like woman, the mother of creation. It shows you a shedding of skin like a snake. Where's the other face? The other face is that of our black counterpart. And let me see if I can bring that up for you. Oh, right there. There she is. Wearing the black hood down here. And there's the black image of the mother of creation. Right there. Showing you how these genetics were bridged over that of our black ancestors to create other genetic bloodlines which was all which was being said in these Renaissance artists artwork I can tell you what all of these references are implying based on what their acts are here let me bring this up now I'm going to bring you another image of Mary Magdalene by another artist and when you see Mary Magdalene sometime if you google her image you notice that her body I don't know if I have the image here no I don't have it I'm not gonna go pull away from here now but I have it when you see her she's depicted as being hairy her body entirely hair over a whole entire body she's indicating her transformation from this guy our ape ancestor. She's being bridged over and, and changing this guy genetically from the, the the original state of the black genetics, the reptilian genetics, into that of our white counterparts. And these genetics are showing you the transformations. And I can go through through the whole bloodline and all through the whole thing, people. All I need is a team of experts to show them and show them what these codes mean and have them create the genetic grail on how this actually all occurred, what was being um, what was being done, and which creatures actually were genetically bridged. Um, here, this is Feast of Simon, Magdalene at the Feet of Christ. This is the Feast of Christ, um, Simon. Now, this image, this is the Feast of Simon. Now, there is no food on the table. This is the Feast of Simon. So what are they implying? Just like what Da Vinci implied in the Last Supper. There was no, there, this is not no food. You know what this was being referenced? Taken in of these guys genetics and, he, and this and this female genetic who was genetically bridged over. It's taking in of genetics. They should say Feast of Simon's genetics where, gene, um, where Simon was genetically bridged. Okay, same thing at the Last Supper, that that is being implied. Look at this, people. This woman is caressing his feet. Now, this is supposed to be the washing of his feet. She's washing his feet, all right? This is nothing more than if Jesus would have his penis out and she had her mouth on his penis. Jesus genetically bridged with all of this. 
and then giving this these genetics genetically to uh, Mary Magdalene, and she's saying, saying, look, people, it's coming to me in the form of Jesus' sperm, shows blood. I'm telling you, people, this is just absolutely phenomenal. Now, th I like this picture because you can't really see much. So, therefore, I am have to explain it all to you. Would you believe that what is here, the Triceratops head and the ape's head and this image of this witch-like woman is being applied here? Sure. They have it to where by now in this evolutionary state of these artists' artwork, the encryption style has changed. But it transcends from all of the art that actually came before it. So by now, people that, the handful of people that know of what is happening here, they know what is going on. Now, I'm going to show you something, then I'm going to come back first. If you look here, in here, in this browning area, there's a the face of an ape. There's the mouth. And then it shows a smaller likeness of it, the shadowed image, black, right here, facing off this way. This would be the eye, this would be the nose, and there would be the mouth. It's, this individual is holding up the ape head, showing you that these genetics are what is being cross-referenced. What is it being cross-referenced with? Now, this, now, I know that this is, you're going to have to Google this image and see it for yourself, people. This is, I know that this is a, the, the genetics of our ape. So, where is the Triceratops? Where is that Triceratops at? Right there, as it's there, and as it's in that Francis Gupta image, which is here, with that penis in its mouth. Oh, by the way, did I tell you that this ape, this Neanderthal ape, is actually casting the shadow of a reptilian ape? When you Google this image, you'll actually see that now that I highlight it for you. Even shows the reptilian lines at the ape's mouth and, and all of that. Shows you that this ape is reptilian, like looking like this Triceratops, showing you that there was a genetic bridging. The image that this Neanderthal is casting is that of that of a dinosaur, showing you that there was a genetic bridging. Here. Um, I'm upside down and I see my numbers on my screen over here. However, the head of the Triceratops is being held up here. I don't know if you can see that point there. Let me come around so I can come in here with you and point it out. Okay, yeah. Look. Look at the, like the serpent here. Look at the, I'm coming around the bottom of the mouth area. Here, there's the mouth coming up. There's the lines. There's the eye right there. And it creates the reptilian presence of our dinosaur. Which now I'm questioning because now it looks more like the serpent than it does the Triceratops to me. But this is the insinuation there, people. The ancient dinosaur bridged with that of ape likeness. And it shows you the resulting genetics. Now, you can Google this image. Now, there's something else here that I see. The way that they're holding this up right here. This ancient dinosaur's head. I'm saying Triceratops, but it's looking like a dinosaur to me now here from this angle from the back. So I'm going back and forth now, but I do know that this is the representation that's being made. If you take this image in totality right here and back off of it in thumbnail size, you will see a mutation of a face that it created. This will be the nose. This will be over top of the lip area. This will be the mouth area. This will be the cheek area. Right in here will be the eye area. And this creates the whole face. And it actually shows you on the back of it, guess what people? The bridging of this side, because on the back of this here is the likeness of that of the ape. It's showing you where these genetics were bridged and brought together. Now, I have to show you the witch-like woman. Now, it's going to be hard for me to do this from this state, but she is right here, right there. 
Now, I highlighted it, but this, let me see if I can get this right for y'all. You're going to have to back off. This is on her forehead. This is her eye area. This is coming around her nose area. Here's her mouth. And it's actually created. This is another encryption style. Her face is created in the folds of the clothing, which is being implied as well here. Okay? Now, as it gets better because the genetics are shown bridged here from what these genetics are, just like that with the image of, of Jesus and Magdalene. Then it shows, look, you see this like this rocker right here that this guy is sitting on? See it? The other end of the, the piece of in its mouth, which would be the switch like woman, is shown bridged over here with this animal. Which I know what it is, and I'm not going to go. I'm not going to actually indicate it yet, but it's a likeness, and I'm sure that if, if you look at it, you can actually. It doesn't take much of an imagination to know what this likeness is, but I'm not going to say anything. But then we have Mary Magdalene here at the feet of Jesus, and if you were to pull back away from it, this this witch-like woman right here, that's here. Pull back from the image, and Mary Magdalene is shown leaning into the into the feet of Jesus the way that she's leaning into and cupping Jesus' foot creates the face and likeness of a witch-like woman that you will have to realize possibly in thumbnail size but let me show you this will be her eye right here this will be her nose this will be the opening of her mouth and this the, the heel of Jesus' foot will be her chin what it is showing you is that these genetics, these cocktail of genetics that was actually created here shows you how they were bridged came through Magdalene and then it shows you how look how this here if you look at this image for what it is now the way all of this is what it shows you is that Mary Magdalene's image is morphing through the genetics of Jesus and it's shown through his foot it's showing you that she is transitioning through Jesus, and this is another likeness. Now check this out. And guess what the genetics are that's being created? They're down here in the serpent's mouth. And there is the serpent right there. There's the eye of the serpent. There's the snout of the serpent. And there's like an egg in the serpent's mouth. Right there. These genetics, these ancient genetics up here shown and produced. And now I'm looking at Jesus. Well, look, people. Look at something I just didn't see. Look at this, people. There's the egg in the snake's mouth right there. The new created gene genetics. This is the witch-like woman's face. You want to see that egg? I passed over it in the first image by Paul Rubens. The, Paul, the image with Paul Rubens Look at Jesus' hand. You can barely see it. These genetics up here. Here. Bridged over them. Cross-reference. That's the indicating of the cross. Look at Jesus' hand. You can barely see it. Because it's, it's, it's hidden. It's, it's encoded into his robe. There's the red egg. He's holding it in his hand, showing you that he took the genetics out and the new bloodline was created. And there it is right there. In his hand. Now, I'm going to show you something. Let's go back to this here. Because this is a serpent right here. There's the open mouth of the serpent. There's the new egg, the new genetics that was created. And it's showing you that they're taking off on a different trail. There's the eye. Now, I'm going to show you something. You see that serpent? That serpent goes a long way. Look, it don't take much for you to see that that woman there. Hold on. Let's go this way. Let's see if I can turn her up so you can get a better look at her there. See how where how she holds Jesus' foot, how it creates a face? And when you back away from it, it shows you that that image and that likeness and you'll see those genetics taken off and these implications are what makes the encryption so unique 
they're in the folds of the clothes, they're in the shadows of the clothes, and it shows you what is being implied. In fact, I can tell you what this is being implied right here. This is in being implied as the pig. That's what that's being implied right there, the pig. It's in association with Mary Magdalene. Alright? That's a pig. It's also in Da Vinci's Last Supper as well, too. Right? And it's in all Renaissance artists' artworks being applied at the same way. And it makes sense because in the um, in the uh, the artwork of um, what is that? The glorification of the Iron Earth, Iron Earth, the same exact thing is being implied. This is people why our organs is so much in comparison to that of the pig, meaning the heart. Or how this creature is so much like us. There is a mutation that is between us and this creature, and I can tell you why. Our organs are incompatible with this creature because this creature is closer to its original evolving state than what we are. And we cannot, I, well, I'm not going to tell you how it is that, but there can be a chemistry created that allows for our organs to be there and these organs to be there, and you just have to know what the, the mutation is that is in between. And I was just seeing this guy over here again. See that face right there, people? Look. It almost is right there. Look at that. You see that? How this person, how this whole, there's a whole face created there. That's what this whole message is about right here. It's these morphing images. And to realize their faces, look at it in different resolutions. Bring it in and out like this here. And close, you see barely nothing. Keep going away, 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 away. And the faces appear. The faces appear based on your knowledge of knowing what they are implying all right and I know and that's why I can see them a whole lot clearer than you are and this is a more difficult painting to actually see but again this is telling us the same exact thing and this is why you see Mary Magdalene with her breast falling the hell out at the feet of Jesus which a lot of people should be appalled by in the first place because if Jesus represents divinity and, and, and divine a divine presence what in the hell is this woman doing with her titty falling the hell out at his feet Painted by this artist and this stuff being accepted globally on a global scale. It's bullshit. That's what it is. It's a bunch of bullshit. Now, the snake with the egg in his mouth, right here. Here's Nervy Hall. This is Nervy Hall. This is the painting by, I mean, this is the sculpture by Fizzini. Nervy Hall is made, um, um, it has its name because that's who created it, Nervy. This is called the nuclear blast with Jesus. And we all know that there's no nuclear blast back in Jesus' day. So therefore, I mean, a nuclear explosion. So therefore, it is a genetic explosion. And you know what it is implying? The reptilian presence and that of Jesus' bloodline. There are faces all through here. My witch-like woman is right here. This is her chin right here. Coming up and on her cheek, there is a gargoyle right there sitting up on her cheek and this face right there. Here's her horn coming across and her face would be in here. But the artist, Fanzini, cleverly created the sculpture and just removed parts so you wouldn't know what's there. But I know her presence through my paranormal experience and encounter. Here is our reptilian ape and there's the bent over penis that creates the cranial of the ape's head there's two penises there's one penis head there bends around creates the center cranial and then the other head is there the bent over penis eye socket eye socket nostril nostril and then the mouth and it shows a genetic chain in the ape's mouth i'm going to bring that in real close people so you can see that reptilian ape that you knew nothing about until i enlighten you Look at the genetic linking chain in the ape's mouth. There's a link there, there's a link there. The ape's mouth, which has been removed by Fazzini, so you wouldn't actually know that, and he can't give you the whole ape because you wouldn't know what the hell to think of that, you know what I mean? You get too much away. And then the other linking end part of the chain is over here, coming out through the ape's mouth there. There's a nostril, there's a nostril, there's a socket, there's a socket. There's one penis head there, there's one penis head there, and the penis is bent around just like in... The image 
of this right here, that two-headed penis, which represents our ancient genetics. Now, I brought this image up because of the snake. Oh, in the snake's mouth, there's the new genetics, the egg, the egg that is being created, a new worm. On the other edge, you'll see the witch-like woman. There's her mouth, there's her nose, there's her eye. All this is in the sculpture too, by the way, people, in the Fenzini. Coming around through the snake's mouth, and then there's the other end of the worm head, and there is a bulb there, like in the image of a man. And all you have to do is Google the artwork of Fizzini or Nervy Hall, and you, I highlighted the snake for you. You would never have seen it. But now that I highlighted it for you, you will be able to see the snake's eye. Even the scales are there, which I highlighted. And the opening around the snake's mouth, these scales right here. And even the teeth. I put the teeth as being white, but they are there. I, to help you realize the snake, all I did was just enhance what is already there. I did not add a line. I did not move a line. The only thing that I did add is I colored in a eye right there in the empty eye socket of what you would find. You Google this image. You turn Jesus' body. What's that? Counterclockwise? I can't tell him here. Yeah, clockwise. Like this here. So we're just like I'm doing. And now that I showed you this image, you will find out that Jesus is boasting here at the Vatican in Nervy Hall in this sculpture by Finzini of his evolution from that of our reptilian ancestors. Now, um, oh, and the new genetics which are being created in the snake's mouth. And Jesus is boasting here, there, as it is being boasted here, in this snake's mouth, right there. That egg in the snake's mouth shows you there's a new genetic line that was created through the cocktail caught like chemistry and practice of this here, which evolve which 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 involves or entails homosexuality, lesbian acts, um, crossbreeding, incest to create these new gen genetics which are created by any means necessary and this is what is happening in the underworld of that of Christianity ancient root of Christianity and this is why you have all of these priests being found guilty are being found to have had sexual interactions with boys I'm, I'm alleging that it's actually going on in the um, in the, um, with Catholic nuns and with nuns in general where they're stating that they're staying virgin and all of this stuff this all is associated with this right here I can show you that as well too you don't hear me speaking on them nuns as much but people I have the evidence as well too I would not be saying it if I could not back it up now this snake with the egg in its mouth this snake is also being referenced in the mines at the mines temples that's coming down the temples with their mouths open it's showing you that genetics evolved from space onto and into our world that's what this is all about people now check this out I want to take you in space because I keep saying that things evolved from space I'm going to take you to space I have a video here also of the hidden flame nebula in space. Remember that worm? This is the hidden flame nebula. I swear to you, all I did was just darken the colors, just like I did with this. Well, hold on, where's Jesus at here? With his. All I did, people was just darken the colors. That's it. 
this is all here. You can do the same thing. I promise you, if you Google this image and turn it sideways, print it out, and all you have to do is just fill in the lines. You don't have to do nothing. I promise you, you don't have to do nothing more than I do, and you'll have the same exact image. Except put the teeth white and just darken the lines, outline this, this, this opening of this snake's mouth. Look, look how the mouth is created, how there's a cup-like area, a real likeness in how a snake's mouth is, and then it gets smaller, it comes around. The same exact thing here, people. Look at this worm snaking out from the, the temple around the, the temple of the snake's eye. Here in space! People, it's the same exact thing that is here at Neri Hall. This is the hidden flame nebula in space. A nebula, gas matter, people. Look. Snake's tooth, is serpent's tooth is bent back, and look what it's holding in its mouth. An egg. This is in space. Uh, and this is of, in, and of enormous proportions, unimaginable proportions in size. Our planet may be lucky if it fit into one of these little micro specks here. Do you know what this is showing you? How life is created and how it evolves throughout space. Anywhere in space I can do this with. Wherever these beings are, I am spiritually connected to them. You know why? Because one day, people, I was taken up a few years back into space while I was wide awake in the midday by the energy of the sun rays. And I stood and I looked back upon our world. And when I came back, I could not believe, well, I guess I could believe, all that I have been given to me in understanding and knowledge. I can do this throughout space. I know where we can go, where, where we belong, and it's not just this serpent here. There's another one in the background that you can't even see that I can bring to light. There's one right here as well, too. There's two of them, just like the mines have them descending down their temple. People, if this stuff is in space, and it is, because you got to see my other videos on the Carina Nebula Paranormal, these beings are being depicted. In gas matter. There are in a spiritual sense these entities showing themselves to us because they exist. We are just in a in a solid sense, in a solidified sense, in the flesh. There are beings depicting themselves in celestial life forms in space. Where we evolved from. This is happening in a nebula mass where get a star is supposed to be being created. Instead, I'm telling you that they're eggs. They are not stars. They are eggs. And we are in another larger celestial body. And this is why this is all occurring. You are being fooled. You are being lied to. Anywhere in space. If there is an image, I can see this. People, there is much to be learned here. Let me turn this phone off right quick before I end this video. Every time I get into concluding a video, here goes my phone ringing. Alright, that's it. I'm done. Google this, people. And then if you really want to see something, look at this face here. Heading off at the snake. That witch-like one. In space. Look at that. And there's much more. I can draw you from the darkest masses to the lightest masses. Creatures, celestial masses and creatures and existences that are in space. We are in one body on our planet that is in another body, that is in another body, that is in another body. And in all of these bodies, there are beings. In the very air that we breathe, these beings exist. In their very utmost, these dimensions, their, their dimensions that we are in, I sense their presence. I know that they're there. I can show you how to bring this all to reality. I can show you where we can go, where we need to go, what we need to understand. I mean, it's just so much to it that it's just beyond the normal comprehension of everything. People, how in the world do you think that I can say that I am not fearing anything? I don't fear this. I don't fear the association of gods, whether they're good or evil. People, if I know, if I have the key to navigating myself through this stuff, 
What in the hell do I need to be afraid of? If I can find you, six six million people are, can sit in front of this. Thing. Oh, I'm sorry, six thousand people sit in front of this thing in service. And none of, of these 6,000 people, no one has ever seen this mess. These gargoyles, these skulls. And I can read the entire thing. What do that tell you, people? And these popes who are using their bodies for genetic sacrificing and genetic bridging. I'm going to tell you again before I close this video. Up. And these, and these mon uh, monks and, and, and priests next to them. They are some of the sickest looking people that I have ever seen in my life. I mean, for to never have supposedly have had had sex or indulged in the worldly things, which everybody else do. I see crackheads that look better than these people. You know why they look ghostly and look sickly like this? Look at his eyes. Sunken back in his head like he done been out smoking on a crack binge or something. You know why? Because they're drinking blood and, 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 and they're taking in this these um, the, semen. Genetically bridging themselves with animals and, and mankind alike. They're using their bodies as genetic bridges. And this is why this man looks like shit. And that's why most of our popes look like shit. You know why? Because this is the problem that they're having. They are genetically bridging, bridging themselves with genetics. They are sickly. And then they are taking these genetics that are being... Um, brewed up in a and 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 a, and a cold drink in a cocktail like way and taking these genetics and contaminating other places. Look at this eye socket, nose, top of the lip area, mouth. Look at these creatures looking down and you, and these people cannot see this. And there's the I mean the ape, the reptilian ape, right there. Eye socket, eye socket, nose bridge. Nostril, nostril. How come they cannot see this stuff? You know why? Because your eyes are transfixed on something that is just as delusional as what they, they don't put in your head. And I put that cross there because you know why he's up there? It's showing you that this man was successfully cross-referenced. And they're commemorating and worshiping him. For all of those genetics that he cross-referenced himself with, and now that is in the c control of these people here. And I want you to think that every time that they hand you the body of Christ, that little piece of bread, to think of that as being semen, that is being cross-referenced at the, at, the, um, at the Vatican. And every time they hand you that little cup of wine and says, I mean that, that, that flask of wine and said, the blood of Jesus, you think of that of being that cocktail cauldron. Of, of, of genetics which include blood that they're giving you to genetically alter the likenesses and the existences and the genetics of mankind. My name is Jerome Wright. I'm out and that's all I have to say for this video. Thank you for watching and you're on my Jerome channel. Stay tuned and please support all my videos.